In this video, I'm going to show how to configure a Cisco SG350 or SG550 to work with an AV over IP solution like the Crestron NVX or similar. This is the first page of the switch. The switch's default IP address is 192.168.1.254. As default, it's uh, unsecured. It's HTTP. We're going to go through how to set that to HTTPS in this video too. The default username and password is Cisco and Cisco. And the first thing we need to do is to change the password. So this is the first page. Uh, we're going to go through the multicast settings in a bit. Uh, I'm going, just going to show you here that there are now four options here. And if we look at this drop down list here, we are at basic first and we switch to advanced. We then get uh, the rest of the settings. But I'm going to start from the top of the configuration and leave the multicast settings for last. So administration is the first thing. Uh, user accounts should create an other account than Cisco. So we have something else than the default. Uh, my name is Patrick Lindahl, so I set P-A-L-I and a password. And a green check for success here. Just close. Uh, if we want, we can remove the Cisco account then. Uh, the next thing is the time settings. These are quite important to get the system time synchronized. Uh, since then we can have the logs in a uh, chronological and easy to read uh, format and the correct time. So uh, I'm enabling uh, sync through PC. I'm also enabling to get this setting from the DHCP server if we have set that option in the server. Uh, I'm in Europe so I set the enable and European daylight saving time and apply. When I've done so I get uh, this to synchronize the time right now. So there it's 1.46 in the afternoon. Uh, next setting is the port management. I'm going to change the setting for what's called green ethernet. This is what makes the uh, switch a bit more energy efficient by uh, bundling several packages together and send them as one packet. That's a problem when we are working with P2P sometimes, so the practice for this kind of solution is to turn off this settings, setting. Apply. This is the global setting for the entire switch. There, success. Uh, there is also settings for each port, so we should go into port settings and do this for the first port here. Turn off these two and apply. And we have the green mark again. Now we mark this first one and choose copy settings. Since this is a 10 port switch, I choose port 2 to 10, apply and it's setting that setting for all the ports. You can do that for up to 52 ports at the same time. Then that and next step is the VLAN. So I'll just add an additional VLAN for show a guest network for example, just to show how it looks in the other parts later. We're not going to configure this VLAN. Then we have um, 
security we're going to TCP UDP services and here we see HTTP and HTTPS is enabled currently I'm going to turn off HTTP I'm going to keep these two uh, turned off telnet is like a SSH but without encryptions and SSH I want so HTTPS for encrypted um, in the browser and SSH for command line uh, when I do this I will be thrown out of the switch since I'm currently connected using HTTP so I just press apply and you see I can't connect anymore because I'm using an unencrypted connection so I just add HTTPS colon slash slash and I get this which says it's not a private connection which is fine just continuing uh, it's fine because I know I haven't loaded a certificate to the switch therefore it's uh, expected so I log in using my newly created account and I'm back in the switch so IP configuration next uh, here we have the IPv4 address I'm using a DHCP and the IP address statically set for this switch where I'm connected right now uh, it's fine for now and then I go to the multicast setting uh, first thing to set is to enable the multicast settings we are also working with the VLAN 1 uh, the 100 was the guest network just to show how that looks in the lists but VLAN 1 uh, I choose under IPv4 uh, to use IP group address not so much because the for example Creson NVX uses that but more because Dante in the uh, ordinate Dante protocol has it in their settings to use IP group address and since there are a couple of NVXs that also use Dante uh, it's a good thing to set it to work with both so apply next we're going to IPv4 multicast configuration and the IGMP snooping we enable the snooping this is what's uh, uh, turning on and off the video streams for select ports when they send their join or leave messages in the network so apply we're still working with VLAN 1 going to edit um, if we look at the guides for the Creston NVX this is how they recommend setting this up we can choose to leave this checked if we want if we uncheck this then we have to make sure we make the M router port static in a later step we get to that um, we also have version 2 or version 3 of the IGMP uh, the most common and the default setting for the NVX is version 2 uh, I have seen some issues in some networks with these switches uh, where we have set them to version 3 and we have speeded up the uh, switching times we also get rid of some interesting issues when we send uh, network streams over several switches so I usually set this to version 3 but you can have it at version 2 if you want if we set it to version 3 we have to uh, also change all the NVXs to ver version 3 the last setting here is the query uh, the query is like the address book keep, keeping track of the different um, network streams in different switches it's a, an, an election process, so the I, uh, switch with the lowest IP address in a network or a VLAN will get the role of a querier. There should only be exactly one querier in a network. So, for example, this is 192.168.1.254. If we also have a switch with a querier uh, election that can handle the uh, querier role uh, 
uh, and it's a dot 20 for example as the IP address that switch would get the role in that network because it's a lower IP address than this one so uh, I press the apply and then close next is the interface settings here we have the IGMP version we should change this to version 2 if we want to only work with uh, version 2 um, edit set version 2 and apply uh, since we don't work with version 2 but in version 3 we'll keep it at version 3 so don't save this if uh, we change we can do the same as with the uh, energy efficiency and just copy settings copying from copying from 2 to 10 and apply that way we don't have to do it on each port here uh, next the VLAN settings the same thing here router IGMP version version 3 uh, proxy make sure these are disabled we don't want to have them enabled with the NVX traffic then we go down to the multicast router port we choose our network where we have the streaming devices VLAN 1 in our case and here we can say that for example uh, if this switch is the only one that holds NVX traffic or AV over IP traffic and we are, want to make sure that the traffic doesn't go to another switch we can mark it as forbidden for the multicast router port and this is a 1 gigabit switch a thousand megabits per port uh, if we connect this switch to another switch in the network and we want to send and we accidentally send two NVX streams through the uplink to the other port that would be in worst case scenario 1800 megabits over 1000 megabit connection that would uh, effect, eff, uh, effectively kill the uh, uplink so we'll set it to forbidden to make sure uh, the traffic can't go to another switch so apply uh, if this would have been a SG350X24 for example with, uh, that's a 24 port switch with four 10 gigabit network interfaces and this would be the uplink port to the next switch we would set this as static instead and the same thing on the other switch in the other end set that port to static that way telling the switch just this is where you should send the multicast traffic next option is forward all the setting is fine just keep it at none unregistered multicast we want to set this to filtering on all ports especially the ports with the NVX traffic and apply that's the multicast settings next we are going to go back to administration and file management and file operations and here we can make a backup of the configuration before we do that we can press the save button here what that does is uh, copying the running configuration which is the unsaved configuration in the switch to the startup configuration which is the well the configuration that the switch loads when it reboots we're going to do a backup of the file we can keep it at, at HTTPS here and we don't have to have any sensitive data like uh, certificates or similar and apply we then get a running config and here is our configuration uh, down here is the settings for the IGMP for example and this file can then be loaded into other switches and just keep in mind to switch for example uh, host name IP address settings and similar and then we are done